In the nation's capital, the final preparations are underway for the inauguration. As many as 800,000 people expected to descend, even as the CDC has issued a new warning about the flu and being careful of crowds. Today, the scientists said the flu has now spread to 48 states. And though we seem to be halfway through the crisis, about another six weeks to go, we wondered, what about the crush of a crowd in Washington? How many of those people could come home from the inauguration sick? Here's ABC's Lisa Stark. At Washington's Mayflower Hotel, they're welcoming inauguration guests with champagne. And this year, something extra, hand sanitizer. The hotel and its guests are worried about the flu. I asked a guest if I can help him with anything else, and he just mentioned he would like to get a flu shot. Some 600,000 people are expected to jam the nation's capital, flying in on planes, packing hotels, rubbing elbows at the balls. Over the course of a flu season, as many as 20% of Americans get sick. Do the math, that could mean thousands of potentially infected visitors. A person with the flu can spread the virus to those around them. If I'm by myself, no worries. But on Monday, this spot near the U.S. Capitol will look like it did four years ago. It will be packed, filled with people who come here from around the country. There's a danger zone. If someone sneezes, those droplets can spread six feet. In a packed crowd, more than a dozen people could be in harm's way. And the risk is the greatest from the smallest among us. A child's sneeze can spread millions of virus particles, ten times more than an adult, because adults have a more developed immune system. So doctors say take common sense precautions, get the flu shot, wash your hands, and just as important. If somebody has the flu, they're probably best off staying at home because they might be sick and they may not feel well. And probably the best seat in the house would be on their couch in that case. You'll feel better, and so will everyone else. Lisa Stark, ABC News, Washington.